Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably heard about Bamboo Lab's latest printer release, the A1, a full-size, fast and precise bed slinger. The printer really didn't come as a surprise because when the A1 Mini was launched, we all assumed that the next machine would be some kind of A1 Maxi. But as it turns out, the A1 is bamboo standard size with a 256 millimeter cubed build volume. That's about 10 inches. It's not quite helmet class, which probably disappointed a few people. If you want the full details on this machine, my review is over on Tom's Hardware, and the link is below. If you're in the market for a new printer, you're probably wondering, how does the A1 stack up against a P1P? <laughs> no, I know, you're here to see how the A1 stacks up against the Prusa Mark IV. But before we get to that, we really need to take a look at the P1P because I'm thinking the A1 is making the P1P obsolete. Or does it? Because it certainly seems to have more value for your printing dollar than the P1P. So let's take a look at that and then we'll get to this one over here. Yes, I actually ran some numbers and calculated the price per square inch of several popular printers on the market. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that whole list. The A1 and P1P do the same job, but the P1P is an open frame Core XY with the old style AMS, a nice neat footprint, and a rinky dink display screen. Personally, the screen never bothered me because I send my files straight over from the computer. The P1P is good for printing easygoing filament like PLA and PETG, which means that this is more for the hobbyist who wants to print fun things like dragons and colorful art. Though you do have to be careful with that chunky glitter because that stuff will literally tear a hole in your AMS's Bowden tube. The P1P is also a whole lot more than the A1, with a price of 59 cents per cubic inch of build space, while the A1 is 39 cents per cubic inch of build space. The A1 is as fast as the P1P, but it has less acceleration. Acceleration is nice if you're printing in ludicrous mode, but most of the time you're not going to use it. If your choice is between the P1P and the A1, the A1 will save you money while taking up more counter space. It's also way easier to maintain with hassle-free Bowden tubes and a quick release hot end that isn't wired into the printer. Now, let's compare the Bamboo Lab A1 to the Prusa Mark IV. Right off the bat, the A1 has the cost advantage, coming in at 39 cents per square inch compared to a buck 13 on the Mark IV. The A1 is the clear winner here. But if budget is your only concern, then go get an Ender. Because this hobby gets expensive real quick, and I don't want you sitting there on the sidelines without a printer at all, because it doesn't fit in your budget. And as they say, perfect is the enemy of good. There's no such thing as a perfect printer. Don't let anyone tell you out there that there is. Just so you know, a big reason the Mark IV costs more is because it's made in Europe where labor is more expensive and any parts that aren't made in-house are probably shipped from China. Chinese manufacturers do have a natural advantage there. And hey, if this video is helping you out, I'd appreciate it if you tap that like button and help my channel grow. Both of these printers are exceptionally easy to use, and I would recommend either one of them for a first-time user. They both have their own custom software, which is specifically tuned for their printers, with default settings that just work. And they also have a website of models you can send straight to your printer. They both have their own line of really good quality filament. You're free to use whatever material you want. You are not locked in. The A1 gets another point for printing in color, but this is a temporary edge. Because Prusa has the MMU3, it's not quite ready for the Mark IV yet. They still have some bugs to squish. So let's make this a fair fight and get rid of the AMS. There, that's better. Before we get to speed, I want to say I'm not very comfortable with this top-mounted spool holder. When you throw all that extra weight up there, you can see how wiggly it gets, which is why I'm not ever putting the AMS up there. It doesn't seem to affect the print quality, but it still freaks me out. Now, about that speed. It's a wash, at least on normal mode. You may have seen Joseph Proust's blog post about how speed doesn't matter, and assumed that he was saying it because the Mark IV couldn't keep up. Well, you'd be wrong. Even though the acceleration and default speed settings in the slicer are a bit slower for the Mark IV, it rarely, if ever, comes into play. That's because every time your printer turns a corner, it has to slow down. When we're printing small and complicated objects, none of these printers can hit their top speeds. The Mark IV with input shaping runs really fast and printed my test models just a few minutes slower than the A1. 
But Prusa was right. Speed is not everything. Some filament just can't run that fast. And you may have to slow it down to avoid layer adhesion issues caused by that high speed. And you also might run into surface quality problems that make things look like crap because they didn't have time to cool right. Let's take a closer look at those toasters. These are Clock Springs Torture Toasters, and they were specially designed to challenge your printer with tricky print-in-place parts and wicked overhangs. The A1 used its own bamboo PLA filament, which was designed to run at high speed. I let it use the default settings of 200 on the outer wall, 300 on the inner, and a 0.2 layer height. It did pretty good, but there was some slight layer shift at mid-print, and it got a little sloppy on the very top. The Mark IV was fed Atomic High Speed PLA and used Prusa Slicer speed settings of 170 on both walls and a 0.2 layer height. It may have finished a few minutes slower, but maybe that's why the print is flawless. Now let's look at maintenance, because every printer, no matter how wonderful, will break or get a giant goober at some point. Maybe you'll forget to clean the bed or load it with a roll of ABS when you meant to grab PLA. These things happen. The good news here is both machines are easy to take care of, have quick change nozzles, and a website full of replacement parts. I have to give points to Prusa for having legendary customer service who can be reached by phone, text, or email. This is where having a more established company really comes into play. Prusa's been at this for a while, and I'm sure they've seen everything. Now, Bamboo is no slouch when it comes to repairs. They have a great wiki, and when a Bamboo breaks, it will attempt to direct you to that wiki so you can solve the problem on your own. They've also been adding more staff to help with customer service as their company grows. Now, let me circle back to that nozzle because this is huge. Both Prusa and Bamboo have custom nozzles. Bamboo's Core XY machines were a total pain in the you-know-what to change. Now, they did give you a steel nozzle so it doesn't wear out so fast, but when you need to change it, it's way easier to unscrew the entire assembly and just yeet that sucker into the trash. They fixed this problem with the A1 and the A1 Mini. And now you don't even need tools. It fits on with a buckle and a magnet. The Prusa nozzle is also pretty sweet. Their Nextruder nozzle was designed in collaboration with E3D and it's got some similarities with their Revo. Like the bamboo, this nozzle will slide right into place and it doesn't have any weak points where the filament can leak out if you don't install it correctly. Sensors and leveling. Again, we're pretty even here. Neither of these machines have an AI camera or a LiDAR, but they both have excellent sensors for probing the bed and finding their own Z height. You can throw away those scraps of paper because you're not going to need it. Now, on to cameras. The A1 has a camera built in, and it works seamlessly with the slicer. It's not the best camera for making time lapses, but if you just want to check on your printer remotely, it's pretty good. Prusa isn't totally out on this one. They have a camera app that you can use with an old smartphone to monitor your prints. So how do they stack up? Bamboo and Prusa both make excellent printers with complete ecosystems that include filament and slicers for a smooth printing experience. Yes, the Mark IV is more expensive. You're paying for European quality while backing a team that's been in 3D printing since the beginning of the RepRap movement. This printer is the original Prusa Mark IV, after all. It's from a long line of proven reliable workhorses and is faster than ever. But we're still waiting for that promised dose of color from the MMU-3. Bamboo's A1 is easier on the wallet and ready to rock and roll in glorious color. They might be the new kid on the block, but they've shown a desire to shake up the industry. And if you happen to live near a micro center, you don't have to wait or pay for shipping because there's an A1 on the shelf right now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.